So I've been on the road for about 30 days and uh, I am anxious to get back here and actually build something. And I have come to the realization that I do not do enough building of projects on this channel. So uh, one of the things you may have seen in my videos where I deal with either 433 megahertz RF or infrared is my cobbled together universal IR RF receiver that basically you can point a 433 megahertz remote or an infrared remote at it and it will spit out the codes and that is an essential tool for me as a maker because i'm constantly interacting with things like tvs and things that use remote controls and uh ceiling fans and and turning stuff off and i decided that you know what it's time to make kind of a permanent version of this cobbled together thing that i ripped out of an escape room I decided to take on this project with an old uh, Arduino Nano, which can be found for basically one to three dollars online, and uh, you can even get them on Amazon for like three for ten bucks. And one of my things that I love about this is that it can be easily paired with one of these cheap Ethernet shields, which we're not actually going to use in the project, but I'm going to put the shield in there because I may use it for a future expansion. And then another thing I love with these things, which we're not gonna use in the project, is that the Nano is compatible with these little tiny screw shields. And they're fantastic for prototyping and all that. Uh, I'll try to remember to leave a link for this in the description. But the package that we are going to be using is going to have the ethernet and the uh, board itself. Now, my original plan was to go and 3D print something. I don't 3D print very much. I use the laser, uh, I use the laser primarily, but I realized that most of my viewers, or my viewers are way more likely to have a 3D printer than a laser cutter. And so uh, I was gonna 3D print this kind of enclosure, but one of the things that I realized is that the hole for the cable, you can kind of see how thick that is, uh, there's no way a cable is going to fully go into the Nano in this enclosure. So I decided that I would use my other favorite Nano enclosure, which is this one. And uh, I like these because you can kind of see the light through it. You can get a little bit of an idea of how the project is put together, but yet it's still in a case and it has these little tabs and you can drop it down here. So I 3D printed one of these uh, blue Arduino Nano cases and... Um, I'm going to keep the Ethernet port in there because I want to be able to add Ethernet to this project and maybe a few more features in the future. So uh, the way this thing works is basically it'll come in like this and we're going to lock it in there with some hot glue. But when it's done, you'll have good access to the uh, mini USB port and to the Ethernet port in a nice neat package. It has these little uh, screw things in here. So it'll look something like this. Now, what we're gonna do is we are going to use a few sensors. So let me see, I might be missing one of the sensors here, but we're gonna grab my sensor kit box. And, uh, oh, actually I do have a, this is a, okay. That's a 433 megahertz receiver right there. And uh, the, if you haven't seen my video, I did a video where I connected all 37 sensors up to one project and that was kind of fun. Um, so we have an RGB LED here and we have an infrared receiver here. Now normally I use these kind of little standalone receivers but I thought you know a lot of you guys have starter kits and they're gonna come with things like this little RGB LED and this uh, this little IR receiver so let's go ahead and use those because they're uh, you're probably not ordering a hundred of these from China like I do in my mailbags. So um, <clears throat> Now the LED is completely optional, but what I thought would be kind of interesting is if we could have some sort of power light or some sort of ready light, and then maybe it would shine, uh, so like green for the thing being ready to receive, and red for receiving infrared, and blue for receiving 433 megahertz. So uh, what we're gonna do, I've got some wires over here, and they're kind of kind of grouped together. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to hook up the 433 megahertz signal receiver first. And so I've got uh, just kind of three wires here. So what I tend to do is if I have red and black, then red is hot and black is ground. 
but if I have white and black or white and gray, then I tend to use uh, the North American AC wiring of the white being my neutral and the gray or black being my hot. So we're gonna we're gonna look at this here, and we have uh, negative over here, so that'll be my white. We have positive over here, and that will be my gray. And then I always use like purple or orange or something like that weird for the signal. Both of these things, if you look here, are digital out. It doesn't matter which one you hook up to, so we're gonna connect that together. Now, uh, I'll talk a little bit as I'm going. The LEDs are gonna be completely optional, and uh, but one of the things that I was thinking about when I was working on the software for this is that I want to do a little bit more explanation of blink without delay, of how to blink an LED without actually using um, the delay function that, that blocks everything on the uh, board. And so I'm using that in this sketch, but I'm going to do a follow-up video that, that breaks that down a little bit more. So I am pushing these on the bottom of the uh, Ethernet shield, and we have... This one is really important. The signal wire here is going to D3, and what's really important about that is there are two interrupt pins on an Arduino Uno and Nano, and there are a bunch more on a Mega. Uh, the nice thing is that interrupt zero is pin two on all of those, and interrupt one is on pin three on Uno, Nano, and Mega. So um, we're going to use pin three because the Ethernet shield will use uh, interrupt zero. So we don't want to conflict with that when we take time to... to uh, to hook up the Ethernet shield. So what I've done is I've connected this to pin 3, D3, and then I've connected the hot to 5 volts and the ground to ground. Then uh, let's grab the infrared here. And what we're going to do, we're going to grab another one of those things. So uh, let's see, we'll, we'll use the same, I've got a different kind of color scheme here. So we're going to take white for negative, and since we use gray for positive on the other one, we're going to use gray for positive on this one. And we are going to connect the signal to black, which is not my favorite wiring scheme, but that's what I've got. So I'm going to do that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to connect this one. Since these are 3 volt tolerant, we're going to connect the, this to 3 volts. So we're going to go uh, gray to 3V3, which is down here. We're going to connect uh, white to ground. Let's find another ground over here. All right, white to ground. And then we're going to connect black to D6 because that is not used by anything else with the Ethernet shield. So right now we have our two sensors connected. The, the main pin of this is to D6. The main pin of this is to D3 which is also known as interrupt one. And the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this module. Now this module is a little bit different. Um, so we have a black wire. We're gonna use the black wire uh, as voltage on this one. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna connect this one. I'm gonna take the five, instead of three V3 on this one, I'm gonna connect this one to V in, which will give me five volts. So we're gonna give five volts on this because that's important. And then if we, do the other one, and you'll see why in a second. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to use red, green, and blue wires here. So I've got a red wire will go to red on the LED. Green will go to green on the LED. And blue will go to blue on the LED. And what we need to do is we're going to connect. Th this works a little bit differently than you would expect. The way this works is this gets voltage from the Arduino and then these three wires are actually pulled low, which basically makes a ground. So essentially figure, plan it that when all of these are, are high, this circuit isn't grounded. But if you pull the red pin low, it's going to complete the circuit and make the red LED work. So you normally you think of, I'm going to turn an LED on by sending that pin high. But in this situation, you're sending that pin low. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to connect this to 3V3 so that we actually use a little bit less voltage there which is fine it doesn't really matter um and then i need to double check <clears throat> excuse me i believe that what we're going to do is connect these uh let's go blue red green let's try that so we're going to go blue 
red green to uh, pins seven, eight, nine. So we're using pins six, seven, eight, nine. I like to try to keep them in a row if at all possible. Uh, let's make sure this one's on there. So let me double check that. Yeah, so we have uh, pin six is the infrared receive, pin seven is blue, pin eight is red, and pin nine is green. And uh, so that should do it. Now what I'm thinking we should do is maybe go over to the computer and we'll look at the code. Okay, so we're going to take a look at some code, but I don't want the amount of code to scare you because this is essentially the demo sketch for the IR remote receiver and the 433 megahertz receiver kind of crammed together. So the first thing you're going to do is install the IR remote and RC switch libraries in Arduino. Very simple. Just go to the library manager, make sure you have those two. And then we're going to define uh, RC switch, which is required to start the 433 megahertz library. And then what I'm doing is I'm going to define these LEDs. And one of the great things is that this sketch will work on uh, Nano, Mega, or Uno uh, using the same pin numbers. So don't worry about that. But we, uh, we're we going to put in the red LED, the blue LED, and the green LED, um, as well as a pin for the infrared receiver. And then we're going to um, just use this to set up the infrared library. And then what I'm doing is this thing receives signals so fast that you would not be able to see the green led turn off or the red led turn on while it's receiving the signals like it's just it's it's microseconds and so uh what i'm doing is i am going to force the green led to be off for a quarter of a second while it's receiving the signal but i don't want to use a delay and so i'm going to do a whole video and i might even release that video first so i can link to it but i'm going to do an entire video explaining blink without delay but uh we're going to put a, a interval of 250 milliseconds in here so that you can see what happens when the thing is receiving a signal and then this is just kind of a placeholder uh variable here so we're going to go down and we're going to set up the infrared uh, receiver we're going to set up the 433 megahertz receiver we're going to set up our leds i also like to put something telling me that the thing has booted so that when i plug it in the serial monitor i know first of all what it is and that it's booted and then we're going to turn the green led on and the other two leds off and then what's going to happen here is all of this is basically example code for decoding all of these crazy signals so you can skip all of that and then what we're going to do is every time we go through the loop we're going to check how long the arduino has been booted and uh if we have results from i believe that is the uh yeah that's the infrared then we're going to assign that to the variable results but um what we're going to do is if we receive any infrared we're going to turn off the green led we're going to or sorry we're going to turn on the red led infrared red and we're going to turn off the green led and then we're going to tell it to undo all of that in a quarter of a second and then we're going to serial print that we received some infrared we're going to decode that infrared and then we're going to go on with our life and if we have uh, received 433 megahertz we're going to turn off the green led turn on the blue led and we're going to say hey undo all that in a quarter of a second and we're going to say hey i received some some radio frequency and we're going to decode that so then what's going to happen here every single time it goes through the loop it's going to say all right if um the led if we've done something with activating the the red or the blue led if time's up, then we're going to turn those two off and we're going to turn the green LED on. So super simple. Um, let me show you how it works over here on the screen capture. And I will maybe shoot some video overhead also of the uh, thing in action. Okay, so I'm going to fire up the yield serial monitor and drag it over here. And you will see that master receiver booted, which tells me that... It's plugged in and we're connected and I'm going to shoot some infrared over that way and you'll see that we get a whole bunch of uh, code we get the short code here we get the encoding method that's NEC we get all the timing we get all the raw data if you need to send it that way 
we get it in hexadecimal format and so very cool information to have uh, should you want to duplicate that remote and you'll notice that when I click it the red light turns on and then um, I'm going to shoot over some 433 megahertz and you'll see that we get the different protocols and uh, and signals that are coming from my little four button keychain and when I do that the blue LED comes on and so uh, such a handy tool to have and then if I want to output this signal from an Arduino I basically need to copy this little bit of information and send it through a 433 sender so such cool information let's get that thing in a case and button it up okay I brought over the silicon mat to do a uh, final assembly and we're actually gonna glue these now you'll see some of them some of the wires just naturally fit down further than others and I don't really worry about that too much as long as the connection is good um, I'm gonna run just a little bit of glue here now I know that may seem a little crazy and I probably didn't need to run it across the bottom of those other pins uh, but as I've said in another video uh, isopropyl alcohol 90% will take it off no problem whatsoever so just enough glue to basically be for uh, vibration dampening uh, just to make sure it doesn't just pop off accidentally okay now I absolutely could have made shorter wires or custom wires or soldered these sensors straight to the board uh, I decided not to do that um, so we're gonna go ahead and tuck this in now I tend to bias it back toward the USB port and make sure that that is in as far as possible. The Ethernet port isn't really going to be much of a problem. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to put some hot glue. We don't want to go a lot over the ridge and we don't want to make it super obvious that it's there. So we're going to shoot some on the top of this and then we don't want to get it in the USB port. So what we're going to do is just get some in here and I'm probably gonna have to clear out where it hits that ridge okay so here we go it's a bit of a tight fit um I have the let's see if I flip it over this way I have a little bit of glue boogers on here I gotta clean up but I've got the antenna sticking over here for the 433 I've got the infrared here which doesn't look like you'd be able to see it but it actually works really well and in fact the little range finder on my camera is hitting the infrared which is why I'm recording at this weird angle uh, but you'll see if I put it over here to the side uh, it's not going to trigger so like I said it's a bit of a tight fit um, we're going to try to get this on here Let's see this is the right side out and uh, these cases man whenever people make these cases on Thingiverse which I'm not complaining it's free but uh, they never leave any margin whatsoever so uh, we're going to get this in you live and you learn. I also, if I had it to do over again, I wouldn't use the module for the LED or the, uh, or the, um, uh, the infrared. It just takes up too much space in this tiny box, which you look at a box like this and you would think, wow, that's more than enough space. But uh, I also have no idea what kind of screws it takes. So I'm going to try a number four. Uh, so we're going to try to thread that in there and hope I don't crack the case. Unlike a detective, I don't want to crack the case. There we go. And we'll stick this side in. It's probably going to have a little bit of a bulge, but that never hurt anybody. Yes, I want to make jokes all through my videos all the time, but I don't. There's no, uh, that's what she said. It's kind of a wrong size screwdriver for that. Go with the number one. Gently tuck it down and you'll see that we have unplugged it all right so uh now you'll see we've got the red light on the green light should come on soon and i can hit a uh, 433 and we'll get the blue light and somewhere around here i have a little remote control here it is infrared remote bam we got red we got blue we got ourselves a project we have the universal receiver. Thanks for watching.